I apologize for the croakiness of my voice when making this video because I was just recovering from COVID, so bear with me. More color. There's Christmas rose, which we've seen before, but now the stunning flowers coming out of this Japanese Camellia japonica, which again is very early out. We'll come round uh, Christmas rose and have a look at this flower here. It's slightly easier to see. I must say they are fat. I would say, fat, these flowers. This is Sandimas. I suppose it is one of the uh, earlier flowering of these Camellia Traponica types. And I do think it's very stunning the way it's got this very deep red petals with the fantastic bunch of, almost a shaving brush, bunch of stamens. Wonderful. In a similar vein, with dark petals and a bright centre, especially when the flowers are just starting off, is Yuletide. This is the sort of a winter flowering camellia. a bit later than the autumn ones and earlier than the others. A beautiful flower, I think, when it's fully out. My experience with Yuletide has been that it takes a year or two to get going and start flowering. But once it gets going, it's wonderful. Yuletide. Yes, I must say this has been a rather strange season because these uh, autumn flowering camellias just carrying on, carrying on flowering. And then mixed up with them are the early flowers of the spring flowering camellias. <laughs> Here is Narumi Gata, an old variety, still hanging on. And down here we have Crimson King, quite a large spreading bush now, which came originally from my father-in-law. The flowers are a bit messed up, but overall the effect is, is still quite colourful. And then around here I see the flowers of a wild camellia. Collected in Hunan, given to me by a friend, which uh, would normally be early uh, February or late January. And here we are flowering now. There are more buds to come, but it's a lovely one. This is Camellia tonganica, and it's a highly scented variety. And the beauty of it is it drops its flowers very neatly before they go brown, which so many white camellias that flower in the spring will, will uh, go brown before they come off the bush, which is very unsightly. There's a shield bug having a little rest inside the petals. Coming past the temple, uh, the round temple, we, in the distance, can now see the pink flowers of the Camellia Cornish Spring. This normally would be flowering 
again by the end of January, beginning of February. But here it is in full fig. And what's more, near it is a rhododendron which has scrambled right up to the top of that verberus called uh, Crossbill. And that would normally be out before Cornish Spring, but they've reversed roles at the moment. <clears throat> it's a lovely camellia, this. Small single flowers, but masses of them. Now here's a bit of a conundrum. This is a grevillea, and this one never seems to be out of flower, whatever the season. And it's got attractive foliage, which is gray underneath, as you can see, which sets off the flowers nicely. I have known this Grevillea, ever since I bought it at Wisley. Trying to untangle that flower from the other. Ever since I bought it at Wisley, 20, at least 20 years ago, it was labelled Grevillea Wilsoni, Williamsoni. Grevillea Williamsoni. And that's how I've known it ever since. Now, just recently, somebody I know has discovered that this is wrongly labelled and it is, in fact, a hybrid, a Grevillea from the Purinda series. Very vigorous. And, in fact, I've had to cut this back considerably, otherwise it would have overcome everything around it. So, this is no longer <laughs> Grevillea Williamsoni, which apparently is completely different looking and very rare. And it's got these sort of upright toothbrush type flowers. This one, however, <clears throat> is now, I've decided, Grevillea Purinda Constance. She'll be ever known as now a hybrid between uh, Canberra Gem and Victoria, and therefore really very hardy, which has been proved here completely untouched, whatever the weather. So there she is, Purinda Constance. I shall have to put a new label on her. Coming down here, making absolutely no impression in the summer, if it were to flower, is this dainty bush collected by Roy Lancaster in the 1980s. A honeysuckle with its uh, little paired flowers. It's a sweet thing and it goes on flowering for quite a while. I chopped it down to about a meter a few years ago, and it's come back from all. This is uh, Lonicera elisi. Using um, untreated oak sleepers um, for these retaining beds, which have been extremely successful. <laughs> it shows the organic nature of the thing because uh, we have the most wonderful fruiting bodies coming up and decorating the steps. Very splendid in their own right, I'm sure. I don't suppose they're doing a lot of damage to the oak. I hope not. It's better not to treat it though. We finally had the uh, 
tree surgeons around to take down this small leafed beech, which really had nothing particular to recommend it and was pushing at the uh, at my lovely Mexican oak, pushing it over, as you can see. Hopefully it'll regain some verticality in due course now that the beach is gone and you can also see the wonderful cunning hamia in the back. Unfortunately, my courage failed me and I've left a sort of totem pole there. Um, well, I'm not entirely sure why, but it might be that uh, it's anyway easy to fell into this gap here, so I could even do it myself. If I get fed up with it, we'll see what happens to it in the spring. Leaving the delicious sweet scent of this camellia, Tanganica. I can smell another sweet scent wafting away from over there. I'll just have a look and I will show you a via, a slight detour, and that is this wonderful bubbly chocolate bark of the Wallamai pine. Isn't that fantastic? People say it's a bit like uh, hot chocolate. Hot chocolate on the boil, however. Anyway, digression, because the scent is coming from over there. Let's have a look. And here is a large suckering specimen of the Daphne from Nepal. Daphne Bolua. Bolua. And this one is evergreen. Been here for years, has formed a massive great shrub or multi stem tree with all the suckers, expanding it sideways. And the lovely scented flowers, which start in the winter and keep going for a couple of months. It can grow certainly to uh, two and a half meters, no problem at all. But here we seem to be up to, oh gosh, four meters at least, I would say, up at the top there. The scent is wonderful. Unfortunately, <clears throat> if you cut it and bring it to the house, <clears throat> the flowers tend to drop off quite readily, which is a drawback. But nevertheless, it's great to have in the house. Bertie, what are you doing in the undergrowth? Waiting for squirrels, of course, as per usual. There's little Nelly, next door neighbor, Bertie's friend. A lovely tracery of branches on the 40-year-old Himalayan birch, Betula utilis, against the blue sky and the sun. Isn't that wonderful? Making a lovely splash of colour is the wide-spreading now, a lovely red camellia called Freedom Bell. It really has a gorgeous effect, brightening up this corner. The final camellia I'm gonna show you is the single white Flowered again fairly early camellia called Francis Hanger. <laughs> 